Hey dudes, Dude the Builder here, and in this episode of Zig in Depth, we're going to be looking at functions in Zig. Okay. Uh, first off, uh, we have here a little uh, simple function, which basically shows the, the simplest way that we can define uh, the function signature. We use the fn keyword followed by the function name, and within the parentheses we have the parameters, a uh, parameter list separated by commas. Each parameter has the name, a colon, and the type. Okay. And after the closing parentheses, we have the return type of this function. And then we have the opening curly brace and the function body and the closing curly brace. Okay. So this is pretty much similar to what you will find in much other uh, programming languages. Uh, next up, we're going to see an example of a function that doesn't return a value. And in that case, the return type is void. Okay, So if you have a function that doesn't return a value, the return type that you must specify is the type void. And that's what happens here with debug print, that uh, it doesn't return anything. And the function, this function itself, as you can see, doesn't even have a return statement because it doesn't return a value. Next up, we have another type of function that doesn't return, but in this case, it's for special uh, situations where it literally never will return. Uh, and, and an example of that is a panic, okay? There's a built-in function called panic, which will uh, basically crash the program. And uh, since that's what we're doing inside of this function called oops, we can specify that the return value of this function is no return. So this basically means that this function will indeed never return. Okay. Next up, we have an example of a normal function here. We have a, a function that doesn't return a value. We're specifying void here, but we are demonstrating that if you have a function that is never called in your program, then it is even evaluated by the compiler. It's like it didn't exist. So here, this built-in compile error, if uh, an execution path uh, arrives at this built-in, it'll immediately produce a compile error with this message. So if this function uh, would, would ever be evaluated, then we would get an immediate compile error. But as you will see when we run uh, our main uh, function, this program, uh, we won't get any compile error because we never call this function. So uh, this basically uh, is one of the features of the ZIG compiler that allows it to produce really small binaries and also speed up uh, compilation speed. Next up, uh, we demonstrate the use of the pub keyword. When you put pub in, in front of uh, the fn keyword, this makes this function a public function. And what does that mean? It means that when you import this uh, uh, an, uh, a namespace a struct in zig that we'll be looking at namespaces and structs later on. Uh, but if you have a function inside another namespace or a struct and it's marked as pub, uh, you can import it from uh, another namespace or another struct. Okay? Um, only uh, functions that are marked pub can be imported uh, from other files or other namespaces. Okay? Here we have an example of an extern uh, function. When you use the keyword extern, you're going to have also after the keyword extern in quotes, uh, basically the name of the library uh, which is uh, an object file um, in, in the case for example of Linux uh, this uh, object files could be with the extension .so uh, when, uh, when we talk about um, creating uh, libraries shared and static we're going to talk uh, more about object files but uh, what we have to know here is that you can make use of functions uh, provided by external uh, object files with the extern keyword. Here the library we are naming here is C so uh, this is a special case um, and we can link against the standard uh, C library and have access to all the functions available in, in, in libc. 
So in this case, we are uh, mentioning here the ATAN2 function from libc, uh, basically specifying here the signature of that function. Uh, and, and we don't specify the body because uh, the function definition is, is not included here. It'll be linked in at, at, at link time, okay? Here we have an example of an export, which is basically the other way around. If we are creating ourselves uh, a library, an object file, um, the functions that are marked export, like this one with the keyword export, are the ones that are available to be used uh, from programs that, that, that make use of, of that, that link to that library. Okay, So here we're making available this mole function. We use the export keyword for that. Okay. Here we have an example of uh, how to inline a function. This is usually not necessary because uh, you should leave the compiler to decide when to inline a function and the compiler is really good at that. But if for any reason you are really, really sure that you have a function that should be always inlined, for example, this is a really trivial example where you're only returning a, a number, uh, in this case a U8, this function doesn't do uh, anything complex. So. Um, it, it's it's a good candidate for inlining. With this function, we want to demonstrate that uh, in Zig, all parameters are always uh, constants. Here, uh, as you will see when we look at the main function and, and try to call this, uh, we are trying to modify this parameter n by incrementing it by one. And uh, this is not going to be possible because n is a constant. Okay. And, as it says here, SIG will determine if uh, though that, that um, argument that you pass when you call the function, if it's going to be uh, a copy or if it's going to be a reference. Uh, in the case, for example, this is a U8. It's a really small primitive numeric type, so that's guaranteed basically to be a copy. But if you have like a really complex uh, data, stru data structure that's really big, um, Zig could determine that the most uh, efficient way to handle that uh, when you call the function is uh, to pass a reference or, or a pointer. It would be the equivalent of declaring this as a pointer const to whatever that data structure is. It'll still be constant so you can't modify it, uh, but it'll be a pointer so um, it, it won't be copying a large amount of data. But that decision is made by the Zig compiler um, and you usually don't have to think about that. Uh, in the case that you do want to modify uh, whatever you're passing in inside the function, then you must uh, specify it as a pointer. Okay, Here, a pointer to a U8. And uh, inside the function, we the reference the pointer with a dot star and we can modify it. Okay, So here in our main function, we are declaring here, uh, defining uh, this variable n of type u8, we're giving it the value 9, and we're calling add1 with uh, using the address of n here, so this will pass a pointer to n, to that, to that uh, u8, and here we print out the result of that. So let's take a look at that output. So on the program and n equals 10 okay no problem with that let's go back here and let's change this to calling at one not which was the version of uh, our function that that doesn't take a pointer and let's try to execute that and as you can see we get our little friend the cannot assign a constant error here okay within the function we're trying to modify n which is a constant okay so in effect, we can see that uh, by default, um, in Zig, uh, all parameters, when you call the function, the arguments passed in, they're going to be constants. Uh, and if you do want to modify, you have to use a pointer. Okay? Um, so basically with that, uh, we have the fundamentals of functions in Zig. Okay? That's pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, we will see more of functions when we talk about error handling 
and when we talk about comp time but for now with these fundamentals um, it's pretty much what you will see in, in most zig code and what you'll need when you're starting out and, and pretty much in, in most of your zig uh, coding uh, experience okay so hope you find this useful did the builder here see you in the next one